A 26-year manhunt for Rwanda's most wanted man has finally come to an end. French intelligence agents tracked down Felicien Kabuga. It's believed he to have, he's believed to have bankrolled the 1994 genocide in Rwanda. Authorities say Kabuga was a slippery customer with more than 20 known aliases. He faces seven criminal charges, including genocide. Well, to unpack the significance of this arrest, I'm joined by international relations expert Dr. Charles Sinkala via Skype. Dr. Sinkala, good morning and thank you very much for your time. I mean, it is really a significant development, especially for the victims and survivors of that genocide in Rwanda. There's no other way of looking at the arrest of Kabuga. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, good morning to you and your viewers. Um, yes, indeed. Uh, um, I think it has uh, refreshed the, the, the wounds which were uh, buried, not forgotten. And uh, I think, you know, it has brought a lot of memories. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, it's a sad situation. But, uh, you know, we must look at it at a different angle. Um, uh, usually, um, uh, the genocide of Rwanda has been one of uh, uh, many which has been investigated, either by the Rwandanese government themselves and the outside uh, international community. Yeah, we, we, I saw a, a reaction by uh, 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 the organization that represents survivors of the genocide from Rwanda who were, who were welcoming it, but they've got a lot of questions that they want to be answered, like how could he have evaded authorities in several countries where he allegedly lived, like Kenya, like Germany, like the UK, and now like France, for a quarter of a century? Yes, indeed, there is a lot of questions which has, has been raised and they've been raised actually over the years. You know, the Rwandan genocide, it, it depends on what angle one will look at it. You know, if you start looking at it at uh, an angle from 1994 on the 6th of April, uh, when the, by then the president uh, of Rwanda, was uh, his aircraft was gunned down, you know, you'll be not looking at an angle of a perspective which you're going to have more information on what actually caused the Rwanda, uh, uh, Rwandanese uh, genocide, you know, which killed more than a million people. Um, you know, you need to look at the Rwandanese uh, genocide from as early as uh, uh, the colonial time, where when the Germany and the Belgium, they shared the uh, Rwanda as a colony, you know, where they, there was some infight. And before that, uh, actually, Rwanda was a monarch, you know, uh, which was uh, uh, governed by uh, 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 the Tutsis, basically. And the, after the Tutsis were overthrown or negotiated that the colonizers were taken, uh, took, took over the Belgians, and uh, uh, the government was formed uh, by the colonizers. But uh, after uh, 1962 uh, independence of Rwanda, um, the Hutus, uh, who the, the, the majority they had to take over the governance of the country. And from that independence, you see a history of uh, uh, proper disunity and hatred in terms of uh, uh, ethnicity and racial backgrounds. You know, uh, Rwanda was never the same, and uh, it has been believed that the 30 years first of the independence was a wasted time and the waste history of the Rwandanese because uh, most of the Tutsis. Uh, uh, were displaced, you know, they were regarded as enemies within the Rwandanese government and uh, uh, and society. And the, most of them fled to Tanzania, Zaire, Congo at, uh, at that time, and uh, 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 Uganda. And most of them, they regrouped, especially if you talk about Uganda, they, where they were uh, refugee camps there. Uh, President Museveni, yeah, there, he actually used them to win the elections, to bring him into power. But to fast track the story about the Rwandanese government, that's where Pokagami, who was one of the general and commanders in the Ugandan army, who fled this country, Rwanda, you know, and was given a very high position. And from there, he was actually supported by Yoelim Seveni to go back to uh, uh, Rwanda and, you know, and, 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 and start fighting the country, you know. Or what belongs to him. But yeah, yeah no, Dr. Dr. Sinkala, sorry, I mean, that's a lot of history, and, uh, and, and, and thanks yeah, for giving yeah. us a bit of background to see, I mean, all the, the divisions and the disunity and the troubled history of, of Rwanda. But when we come to today, post-1994, 
Uh, I mean, the arrest of Felicien uh, Kabuga, who will be standing trial soon and maybe provide answers to many questions that might be relevant, particularly for the victims and survivors of that 1994 genocide. Uh, uh, how important is it that justice must be seen to be done in this specific case? Yes, so we, you know, we all support that justice must be done. But the question we have to, be, to raise is the history for people to understand. And hence, I deliberated on the background so that uh, even the victims themselves must understand that this is what uh, led to the genocide in, uh, uh, in uh, Rwanda, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, arresting uh, uh, Kubuka now uh, is uh, something, yes, of refreshment. But uh, what's the intention and the motive of him financing the war, you know, uh, Kabuka was uh, uh, one of the renowned businessmen who helped the Rwandanese people, including both the Tutis and the Hutis, uh, where he came from. He had the farms uh, where he cultivated the tea and the tobacco and the other resources. He had uh, actually the uh, television the radio station, you know, where he was trying to, to assist the government. And actually part of his uh, two daughters were married to by then the president at that time. So if you look at that, the background of the man whom has been uh, depicted by uh, the international community, that is the, one of the financiers, the one who uses radio and television uh, channel to influence uh, the ethnic group which we are fighting. And most of these uh, uh, issues, if you look at them to a lengthy, and the people who have been interviewed in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the prison, they will tell you that most of them, they are voluntarily participating in uh, acting and using the machets and the hoy, all the farming implements. And if you look at the report which has been published regarding the genocide, you find that uh, uh, they have accused the Kabuga as uh, the mastermind simply because of the implements he purchased between the period of 1990 and 1994 leading to the genocide. You know, and uh, it is actually not true. And if you look at the influence of the international community, especially France, and I'm not surprised that he was found in France, you know, and this is really the questions that the victims, they are asking why all this time he has never been arrested. You know, uh, Kabuka stayed in uh, Kenya and he fled to Switzerland. He was almost arrested. He went to Democratic Republic of Congo until he disappeared. You know, in, in 1997, he was uh, charged, you know, outside of uh, his country by the international uh, um, a criminal tribunal of Rwanda, and that was disbanded by Pokegam in 2015 for the reason that he has reshaped Rwanda to be united on the basis of uh, calling everybody as a Rwandanese and not as Tutsis and Hutis, you know, because post-election yeah. uh, and the independence, rather, there was that issue of calling each uh, one of them either by the Tutsi or uh, or, or, or the uh, the Houthis. And even in their national session card, the ID numbers, they were classified as that. Yeah. The so there's a lot, Dr. Sinkala, <laughs> so I wish, uh, Dr. Sinkala, sorry, sorry, sorry to come in there. I, I wish we had more time. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, a lot of time to delve into a lot of that uh, nuance that you are bringing out in terms of the history and what led to such deep-seated hatred and led to the to the genocide. But for now, I'm afraid we're going to have to to leave it there. We don't. We've just run out of time. Thank you very much, Dr. Sinkala, for some of that. Just giving a little bit of context of of what lies behind uh, what has happened uh, in in Rwanda, and now, of course, with the arrest of the alleged mastermind, Felicien Kabuka. We're going